After successfully bringing Zeiss Optics to its Android family last year, the Nokia brand, licensed by Finland's HMD Global, is in the rumors for a Pentacamera smartphone that been been in the headlines as the Nokia 10. The rumored Nokia 10 smartphone has now surfaced on a raw sketch that purportedly showing the all-new camera setup. Apart from the new Nokia 10 camera phone, specifications of the Nokia 7 Plus have been spotted in a benchmark listing to hint its launch at Mobile World Congress MWC, 2018 next month. Nokia 10 Pentacamera setup according to the details spotted by the Nokia Power user through the leaked sketch, which has been obtained by a trusted tipster, the camera module on the alleged Nokia 10 phone looks similar to a dual lens camera with a primary lens at the center. Other lenses on the module are likely to be hidden underneath the module. Moreover, the module is rotatable to change the focal length in combination with the main camera. This is something that Zeiss formally suggested in a video through its Twitter account back in last July. Below the uniquely designed camera module, the Nokia 10 will have a fingerprint sensor, and the back of the smartphone will be covered with a 3D glass panel, as per the leaked image. The smartphone is rumored to have an 18,9 display and come with a Snapdragon 845 SoC, similar to what has been reported for the upcoming Nokia 9 flagship. A patent application with a German patent and trademark office confirms the development of a multi-lens mobile camera technology by Zeiss. The technology, as described in the patent application, is based on an array of additional lenses that have different focal lengths and are mounted on a rotating lens base that sits between the camera sensor and a normal fixed focal lens. Nokia 7 specifications alongside the Nokia 10 details, a Geekbench listing has been released that points at a Nokia 7 Plus. The listing, which was available on the official Geekbench site at the time of filing this story, details that the new Nokia smartphone runs Android 8.0 Aria operating system and is powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 660 SoC, coupled with 4GB of RAM. Details about the display and the camera sensors of the Nokia 7 Plus aren't available in the listing. Nevertheless, the smartphone appears to have a decent overall performance with single-core Geekbench scores of 1,636 and multi-core scores of 5,902. It is worth noting here that the upload date for the listing is mentioned as January 26. Therefore, we can expect some revisions to the available details over time. HMD Global is debuting at MWC 2018 in Barcelona next month to make some new announcements. While the Nokia 9 is expected to be the flagship launch at the forthcoming event, we can also presume the arrival of Nokia 8, 2018, Nokia 1, Nokia 4, and Nokia 7 Plus. Nothing particularly earth-shattering debuted at Mobile World Congress, MWC, in Barcelona the usual array of smartphones were unveiled with Samsung taking top billing, net neutrality emerged as a talking point thanks to FCC Chair Ajit Pai's attendance, and the 5G steamroller trundled into second gear with some interesting early innovations rearing their heads. But buried within the hullabaloo of Samsung flagships and promises of a future 5G utopia, HMD Global the home of Nokia phones unveiled not one, not two, but five new Nokia branded phones. Constituting four smartphones, one of which was the Nokia 7 Plus flagship, as well as a nostalgia trip in the form of the reimagined Nokia 8810 banana phone, it was clear that the Nokia mobile phone brand is here in a big way. Reborn. If you followed Nokia's mobile phone saga over the past few years, you'll already know the background story, but here's a quick recap. Nokia itself no longer makes phones in 2016, the Finnish company helped establish a new business vehicle called HMD Global that would ensure Nokia's mobile phone brand lives on through a licensing arrangement. HMD Global basically develops the Nokia branded smartphones and feature phones, with Foxconn subsidiary FIH Mobile taking care of manufacturing duties. So Nokia, the company, has no direct role in developing these phones, aside from lending its famous name to the handsets. After all, why would you use the corporate YHMD global nomenclature on your device when you have a perfectly good legacy mobile phone brand, recognized by billions, at your disposal? 
though it is still early days, things seem to be working out reasonably well. In December, HMD Global marked its first full year of its 10-year licensing deal with six smartphones and five feature phones on the market. Throw into the mix the further five new devices announced at MWC last week, and Nokia will soon have 16 new mobile devices available to buy around the world. And early numbers have been encouraging. In December, one analyst at CounterPoint Research reported that Nokia-branded phones were the eighth most popular globally in terms of shipments in Q3, while it was apparently the top-selling brand in the Middle East and number three in the UK. It's worth noting noting that these figures bundle both feature phones and smartphones together. These numbers are not concrete, but they are promising. And HMD Global was clearly looking to strike while the iron is hot with the five new phones announced at MWC. However, it's important not to get too carried away, because Nokia's recent footprint puts it at just 1% of the overall smartphone sales market share. Moreover, it's worth looking at the bigger picture to remind us of how we got to this point. Slide the timing of the latest launches was notable in terms of historical context the Nokia mobile phone brand has embarked on quite a downward trajectory over the past decade. In February 2008, a Gartner report pegged Nokia as the world's number one mobile phone brand by far, accounting for around 40% of all smartphone shipments the previous year. However, Apple had only just shipped the first iPhone in mid-2007, and the first commercially available Android phone didn't hit the market until late 2008. And with the smartphone war only just beginning, Nokia snapped up Symbian in 2008 to boost its own ambitions in the burgeoning space. What happened next was rapid. It's always interesting to look at certain tech companies' share prices around the time that the iPhone and Android devices starting rolling out. In the case of Nokia, its shares slid almost vertically between October 2007 and October the following year, its stock price dropping more than half. By 2011 the company was in Microsoft's pocket as the duo fought to push a third force in the smartphone operating system realm, and Nokia's stock price hit an all-time low in 2012. By 2014, Nokia's mobile phone business was owned outright by Microsoft, but by the following year Microsoft had taken a $7.6 billion write down on the acquisition. And in 2016 Microsoft pretty much washed its hands of the whole sorry Nokia episode. It's at this point that Nokia realized it would have to start again from the bottom up, because it didn't have the necessary manufacturing infrastructure to produce hardware at scale. But what it did have was a brand. A powerful brand that millions of people over a certain age recognize. It didn't matter who actually made the phone all that mattered was that there was a clear Nokia badge on the phone. What now while many had written the whole HMD global slash Nokia escapade off as a lost cause, armed with a powerful brand, a mixture of mid and high end Android phones, and a dash of nostalgia with the Nokia 3310 and the just announced 8810, what we have is a credible attempt at reviving the once mighty Nokia phone brand. But one swallow doesn't make a summer. Or, in HMD Global's case, a couple of reasonable quarters and a new slate of phones don't mean world domination. But what this does show is the power a brand can hold over consumers.